I've reviewed a ton of chairs, but this here, the Hayworth Fern, this is an S tier chair, and it's now tied for my new number one recommendation. Let's get honest. <laughs> asked me to review the Hayward Fern and I'm so thankful that you did because this chair is like the best of every chair. The embody, the gesture, the Aeron, the leap and kind of mashes it all into a single chair and it's half the price of many of the offerings from Henry Miller and Steelcase. And right now, Hayworth is running a 10% off sale off of their Amazon store. If you wanna pick this chair up, please use the link down below as it really helps this channel quite a bit. In terms of sizing, I'm five foot six, and when I sit in the chair, my feet touch the ground very comfortably. I'm gonna say it's probably good for people all the way down to about five feet tall. And if you're on the shorter end and you find that your knees are not in that 90 degree or above 90 angle, you can always get yourself a footrest to prop those legs up. But for my tall freak of nature friends, this chair is also for you, I'm gonna say probably up to about six foot four because not only is the seat pan nice and wide, but also it extends out very far and it's got a very well designed backrest that's also very tall. I was so excited about this chair that I actually brought in a tall friend of mine and you can see his full thoughts later at the end of this video. In terms of weight, Hayworth claims that this chair can accommodate up to 325 pounds and I believe them because this seat is amazing. More on that in the seat section. Really quickly, I'm trying to hit 50,000 subs before the end of this year. So if you could do me a favor, like this video, get subscribed, leave a comment down below that tells the YouTube algorithm to push this video out to help others find their perfect chair. I really appreciate it. The casters on this chair are nice and quiet and the legs are a little bit rounded, but they're wide enough that you can rest your feet on them very comfortably if you're someone who likes to tuck your legs and rest your feet on them like I do. The rest of this chair reminds me of, again, the, the, the best of all the best chairs that I've reviewed. So starting with the features under the chair, not only can it go up and down, and then of course you can lean back, but the way it leans back is that you get four interval locks. So you get the top lock, which makes it pretty fully locked and then you can lower it one time to go a little lower then two times to go even lower and then three times to go even lower and then four times to go all the way down and this thing goes back pretty darn far the one thing it doesn't have just like all the other big chair companies is that you cannot lock this in place while lean back i really wish you could but fortunately you can't but in addition to the lean back you also get this knob here in which you can tighten or loosen the back tilt tension and it works really well about 10 turns gets you from fully loose to fully tight and be very careful because if you loosen your chair you will fly back as i learned if you that's about 10. Yes, <laughs> this thing will just let you fly back. So be very careful. For my ergonomic rebels and my tall freak of nature friends, this seat depth can come forward. You gotta use that hip thrust. You gotta slide that thrust forward, that hip forward. And then if you wanna close it in, you gotta uh, reverse thrust there. But having this extra seat depth is really nice for if you wanna curl your legs up or you just have longer legs and you want a little bit more thigh support. And here's the thing though, when you scooch all the way back, you do feel a tiny bit of gap in the furthest back position. This is why I much prefer the embodies implementation where the front rolls out as opposed to the entire seat pan moving. You also get a front tilt forward on the seat only. This is something that echoes the Herman Miller Aeron as well as the Herman Miller Sail, but it's much better implemented on the Sail and Aeron than it is on the Fern. The reason why it's not as good on the Fern is because on the Sail and Aeron, the entire chair tilts forward. And the purpose of that is that it's supposed to, by sitting forward like this, it's supposed to relieve pressure off of that lower back. But because the Sail and the Aeron totally lean forward, it really encourages you to have a straight back while sitting forward like this. The Fern, on the other hand, because only the seat tilts forward and not the whole chair, I can see myself easily slouching while in the forward tilt position. So in my humble opinion, this is not something that's gonna be really necessary on this chair because it's just not as well implemented. The seat pad on this chair is one of the best I've ever used. It is, I would say, a medium soft, but when you really push into it, it really pushes back and gives you a lot of support. But the best part about this seat is that I cannot feel the bottom at all. I am not light. I'm about 174, 176 pounds. My friend Young, who came in and tested this, is 200 pounds, and he sat on it for about two, three hours, and he said, yeah, I don't feel anything on the bottom. This is a big complaint that I've heard about the steel case gesture, was that after a while, people could feel the bottom, could feel the plastic. So in regards to the cushion, I much prefer this and it's really nice and thick. As always though, with a lighter color fabric, you do run the risk of having your pants 
if especially jeans or colored pants rub off onto that fabric. And with any fabric, it's got a greater chance of absorbing your booty juices. So that's something you need to keep in mind. The arms in the fern are super customizable. They actually remind me a ton of the Steelcase Leap arms. So the most basic obviously can go up and down, it can go slide forward and back, but you can also civil them and you can also bring them in, but those two functions are mashed together. You see, if you wanna bring the arms in, what you have to do is first you have to swivel the arm and then take the back and slide it in. Again, you, you swivel the arm as, as in as you want it, and then you slide the arm until they're parallel to your body. And if you want it out in the same way, you can swivel the front or the back, it doesn't matter, and then slide the back or front until they're parallel. So that's the way you use that. The arm padding on this isn't super soft. I'm gonna say it's as soft as the Herman Miller and Body, if that means anything to you, but they're soft enough, they're pretty good. The downside of the arm though is that at the very top, I find that they're just a little bit too wiggly for my taste. The most amazing feature about this chair, I think is gonna be the backrest. This backrest is super well designed and it's super tall, making it great for tall people, giving you additional back and shoulder support. Again, my friend Young is gonna come and give his thoughts on this chair in just a minute, but the way it's designed is that this mesh here is actually a padded mesh. And what that means is that you get a lot of comfort on the back, but then they also use this kind of rubber grid system in the back to give you additional back support. And man, it feels really, really great. It's not gonna be flexy like the Embody, which I do think has a superior back, but it's also double the price, but again, and it feels really great. But in addition to that back support is this optional lumbar support. And the lumbar support is what I'm gonna call like a rubber bubble. And not only do you get a huge range of motion so that if you, you can basically put it wherever you want and again, can accommodate for super tall folks who obviously have taller backs. So it's got that going on, but because it's a rubber bubble, it's gonna give you additional like five, mildly aggressive lumbar, which I really like, but because it's a bubble, it's also gonna flex with you and it feels really Really, really nice. Now, it's not just the tall back and a nice lumbar that makes a good backrest, but it's also the way it was designed. As you can see, as it goes up, it narrows in. And what that means is that when you sit on the chair, I've had a, I've used a lot of tall back chairs before, but one of the big downsides of some of the tall backs is that when you sit on it and you pull your arms back, your arms, your, your triceps bang into the frame of the back. But this backrest was designed because of that narrowing, you get a ton of room to spread out that chest without ever running into the back. So this allows you to sit very freely, allows you to sit properly, and it's just, it's just so good. As promised, here's my tall friend Young to give his thoughts on the fern. Hi, I'm Young. I'm 6'1", and I'm around 200 pounds. So being a taller person, one of the main things I look for in a chair is my shoulder area. Because some of the chairs, they dig into my back, especially the shoulder area, the upper back. But here you can see, it doesn't dig in. It actually covers it pretty well, so it's pretty comfortable. The lumbar is really important to me as well. And I personally like a more aggressive lumbar. But here, you can definitely feel it. But it's more like a, a bubble feeling. So you can kind of push into it, and it's not hard. So it doesn't feel like my body's like, arching backwards, so it, it's really comfortable. So I stole Dan's Mavics M7, because initially it, it felt pretty good. But after a few months sitting in it, I started feeling really uncomfortable, especially in the lower back area. So then when I'm sitting on this chair, because of that lumbar support, oh, it feels much nicer. So personally, I really like the Embody, but the Fern does a really good job emulating a lot of the good features here. Now. The only two things that I can really see the difference of the two is the top, uh, the back seat here, where I, when I'm sitting on the Embody, it really kind of hugs me in the back, but not overly, but just enough so that it feels really comfortable just either sitting or laying back. And second thing I noticed was on the Fern, there's a gap between the back and the seat versus the Embody is just one piece. So the pressure on the lower bottom, lower bottom, lower back, feels slightly better. Ignoring price, which is hard for me to do, I'd say the Embody wins, hands down. However, after hearing that the Fern is half the price, th uh, there's no way. I think for an everyday, normal work from home kind of person like me, I think the Fern wins. And I personally am strongly considering picking up the Fern for myself because I can't deal with the Mavics M7 at this point. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. If you like the Fern, links will be down below. Please use them as it helps this channel a lot. Like, subscribe, and comment down below if you haven't already for the algorithm. And until next time, guys, stay safe, and as always, stay honest.